All right, so I had this whole idea for this week's Sunday video, and it's not going as I had planned, so gonna do something else because I cannot leave y'all without a Sunday video. This video is going to be a thrift haul at an antique mall. For my sister's birthday, we ended up going to the Hamilton Antique Mall. I haven't been there since 2019. So it's been a really long time. And the last time I went, I think I found like one thing. Like it wasn't the greatest experience, but this time, let me tell you, I found exactly what I was looking for. This mall was way more than I expected. I haven't been back since 2019. And I've only been to two antique malls, this one and the one in Woodstock, Ontario. So I really didn't know what to expect out of this mall this time because you know, it's been a while since I've been here and my last experience here was okay. Yeah, uh, so it was, it was nice coming back and kind of seeing what's changed over the years. What is he? He's an otter. Oh, I'm like, did his ears get ripped off? I thought he was a bear. He's just a lad. Oh, that movie creeped me out. Fantasia. I have to say that when I started my thrifting journey way back in the day, I feel like a lot of these antique malls and stuff like that, when you think of retro or vintage, it was very much 1950s, 1960s, and now it's it's a lot of 1980s and 1990s with, you know, a little bit of 2000s sprinkled in there. I kind of love how everything is more catered to the 1980s side of things now because you know me i love the 1980s just the whole aesthetic again my aesthetic is 1980s in the fall time I feel like these antique malls are like right up my alley to find what i'm looking for look at them ready to go on a little date brought some flowers this one. Being a kid in the 2000s meant I loved Pokemon and I saw a lot of little Pikachus that I had and uh, I had a lot of those. I had a lot of them and I have them somewhere. I just gotta find them. This time we actually went out of order in like the way you would probably typically go through this antique mall. We started off in the main floor and then we went to the basement and then eventually went to the third floor and then the second floor and then back down to the first floor. There was so many old man grandpa sweaters at this place. Oh, if I could afford all of them, you know I would. But also I have to keep in mind that spring is coming up. And if I buy a lot of these sweaters, I won't wear them till next year. You know, that kind of stopped me from buying some of them. Also the prices on these kind of stopped me from buying them. But you know, it was really cool to look at all of these sweaters. But if I buy one duck, I gotta buy both ducks. Then they don't feel bad that I left one behind. That means I gotta buy three ducks because there's three of them. The winner of best booth, in my opinion, is this one right here. And this one is by Rainbows and Retro, and oh my goodness, they also had a booth in the Woodstock one. They actually had several booths in the Woodstock one, and I love them. Like, I could just spend hours just sitting here and just looking at everything. Like, their booths are always the best. Oh, this TV, I need him.
I regret not buying this penguin sweater. I think it was just a little too small. Oh, but it was just so amazing. I also love going to these antique malls because I can kind of get inspiration for future projects like those cup coasters. I feel like I would love, love to make those one day. I also love it when a booth has a theme. It like, even if it's not my personal theme that I like, I just love it when the booths have themes. I really liked this booth, very 1960s. There was a lot of really cool things like that mirror and then this orange mirror here. I love this mirror. It was a little bit pricey, but then like looking at it, I'm like, oh, I probably could make that. And I might, but I have no room to hang anything in my room, so I probably shouldn't make it, but uh, I kind of want to. What is it? <gasps> no, no. How much is it? I, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm, yes, yes. Wait, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh my God. I really liked this booth. There was a lot of vintage cameras, but also it just kind of gave like 1980s electronics vibe, you know what I mean? And like, I'm all about that. to switch cameras because my other camera died on me and I forgot to charge the other battery. So that's on me. Anyways, I'm gonna show you what I found from the antique mall. I might have not found a ton of things, but that's okay. Again, I'm trying not to buy things that I just don't need. Also, it's really helpful at these antique malls. It's like, I'll see a bunch of stuff that yes, I am in love with. But then when I see that price point, I'm like, maybe not so much. But if I saw the same item at a thrift store for a cheaper price, I would have bought it. It's kind of like if I really, really needed it and wanted it, then I will pay that more expensive price for it. Certain things, I'm just like, I guess I don't need it. So yeah. Anyways, let's get into what I found. One of the first things I found were these earrings here. Very retro, very 80s, you know how I'm going through that whole 80s phase. And I don't think it's a phase anymore. I think it's just a lifestyle. Bought them at Rainbow and Retro. And if you had watched my last vlog where I went to an antique mall, I went to one in Woodstock. They have a booth in the one in Woodstock, but they also have a booth in Hamilton and it's the same vibe and I absolutely love it. When I walked in and I saw that booth, I'm like, I know whose booth this is. So adorable. So I'm really happy that I was able to find something from the booth this time even though they were just like little earrings. But the amount of stuff in there is just so many good pieces. I found a fanny pack, belt bag, whatever you want to call it at a thrift store the other day. And I feel like that bag is going to be my summer bag. Usually like if I'm like, you know, thrifting, going out, I don't want to go out besides going thrifting or yarn shopping. But I did find the perfect 1980s bag of my dreams. And that is this white purse here. Now I don't know when this purse was made, okay, it could have been two years ago, could have been 30 years ago. I'm just realizing now that the 80s was 30 years ago, because to me, the 80s were 20 years ago, max. But the beginning of the 80s was actually 40 years ago. Don't mind me going through my existential crisis. But I wanted a nice white bag because this just screams the 80s. And I'm like, I kind of really want this. Here's the thing is I did find white bags in the past, but I need a bag that does this. I need a shoulder strap bag. I don't want one that just goes over my shoulder. I don't want one that I have to hold. I want a 
put it on my body and then forget about it. But I feel like this bag has to go with certain outfits. Like I don't think it would go with the outfit that I'm wearing today, which has really cute ducks on it. Like with my 80s fashion, I'm either going towards, you know, teenager, 20 something, or like to the other extreme, which is grandpa in the 80s with the grandpa sweaters, cute duck sweater. Sometimes I do want to dress like a little bit feminine. So I feel like this bag does it for me. And I have a shirt some somewhere. I'm thinking something like this, okay? This is probably more 90s. I don't know, I feel like I'm making a, an outfit around this bag, but I'll do it. So I feel like with this bag, the outfit that I would choose is something definitely like this with the pastels, with the colors, a little bit more playful, a little bit more feminine. I feel like that would work best with a bag like this. And that was my problem is that I wanted to wear cute grandma kind of clothes. Also think like, you know, Nancy Wheeler, Stranger Things, that kind of vibe. I wanted to wear stuff like that, but my bags always made it look too modern. It never suited it. And now I have the perfect bag to do, like to, to wear these type of pastel clothes because I have so many pastel clothes. Couldn't figure out how to wear them. Well, now I do. This bag will like bring it to life. The next item that I found, I want to say a little bit more on the 90s side, but like late 80s, early 90s. And when I saw it, I'm like, I found it. And that is this teal jacket right here. I know I don't really gravitate towards this color as much anymore, but when I was in grade four in 1999, I had a teal jacket and the lining in it was like the dark purple color in here, but it was all dark purple. And I've been kind of looking for this jacket everywhere I go. Maybe I'll see it again. Maybe I won't. But when I saw this, I'm like this, this is the jacket. This is the one that I have been looking for forever. It was also on sale. It was on sale for $20. I don't know what it was originally. Probably wouldn't have paid the original price, but because it was on sale for 20 bucks, I'm like, you know what? A nice coat that I've been looking for forever. And I mean, Value Village doesn't make it easy anymore. They would probably sell this for $30. So, you know, I guess I got somewhat of a deal. I don't see a name on here. And you know what I'm just realizing right now? It's reversible. That's why I don't see a name on here. It's reversible? Two jackets for the price of one? Let's try it on the first way. It fits perfectly. There was another jacket that I was really close of getting. And it was a Northern Reflection, so you know that's always where I go first, but it was just way too big for me. The sleeves were way too long. It was way too big here. And it was I was a little upset that I couldn't get it, but then this one was right next to it for the same price. And I'm like, I guess I'm getting a teal jacket today. Now I'm finding out that it's reversible. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. There's pockets. There's like pockets up here and there's pockets down here. There's so many pockets. I love it when a coat has multiple pockets. I don't think there was ever a hood. I feel like this could have had a hood at one point, but I just don't see where it would have went. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm quite, I'm quite excited. I'm just kind of feeling around to see if there's any brand. Oh, I love this brand. This brand here is called Sequence and my favorite coat of all time. My big puffy yellow one that I wear in the winter is the same brand. This jacket was meant for me, like 100% meant for me. And then, like I said, I feel like this white purse would also go with this look. I have one more item to show you and I have been actively looking for this item for quite some time. Basically since the early 2000s, I've been looking for this item. My sister actually found it. What is it? <gasps> no, we found switches. Okay, if you've been watching my last few thrift hauls, I've been thrifting old board games and I was mentioning how I was looking for this board game right here called Switches and I found it. I found it. And here's the thing, it was only $25. And yes, $25 for an old board game might seem a little bit, I was willing to pay upwards to $50 for this game. I've scoured the internet for it. And anytime I find it, it's like well over a hundred dollars. Try to maybe find knockoff versions or other versions. That's the same type of game. No dice, no luck. I cannot believe we found this and it was sitting on the floor. Let me just kind of go over what switches is. For the pieces, they're little witches, but they all look exactly the same, except for underneath, there's different colors. Also, don't mind my hands. These are not bruises. I accidentally left some food coloring dye 
open and uh, it got all over my hands and now it looks like I got frostbitten and I have <laughs> bruises on my arm, but it's not, it's just food coloring. Anyways, back to the game. I just want to get that out of the way in case anyone's wondering why my hands look like this. It's food coloring, because I'm making a cake. Fun times. Premise of the game is to all start on the start one, and you pick a color, and of course, I'm gonna pick yellow, and you just work your way around the board to the end. You know your color, once you put it down, might be the last time that you know what color you are. There's no cards in this game, you're just following what's on the board. And there's certain ones you have to look out for. If you land on one, like this one here, that says switches, it means that everybody else has to turn around they can't look and you can switch say to two witches and then once you made the switch everyone can look again they don't know who you switched you could have made like a good move about putting your character in first but at the same time do you really know that's your character the other one is this one here and it's called look so what ends up happening is you you know you move if you end up on that square you're allowed to pick up any one of the players to see what color it is to make sure that you're moving the right character. So everybody has to close their eyes, you pick it up, you look. For me, I'm supposed to be yellow. This is a blue one. Where am I on this board now? Put it back down and then continue the game. But now you can move whatever player you want because obviously you're not, I'm not blue. So I don't wanna be moving that one anymore. Another one is called this one here, which is called look and switch. So say I land on here, pick it up. I look, hey, I'm yellow, but I can now switch it with any one of these on the board. So while everyone's not looking, I'm like, well, I want to be in first place. So then I'm going to move that one there and I'm going to move mine there. Moving along and I get to the end. I look, I'm not red, I'm yellow. When I look at it, nobody else can see the color. If it's not my color, I have to put it on this white cauldron here and then everyone else continues with their move. The winner of the game has to be the player with the right color. I'm yellow, so the only way for me to win is if I get the yellow witch, which I hope it's yellow, to the end. I look at it. I'm yellow. I move the yellow one here. That is the end of the game. If I'm not the color, you have to put it back on this white cauldron. Now, fun fact, we didn't play this way when I was growing up, mainly because it wasn't our game. We didn't have the instructions. We were just playing how the neighbor kids told us how you play this game. And what would end up happening is say like I was moving this red one the whole time and I went here and I look at it and I'm red. We were just like, well, whoever the red one was, they win now, you know, and they don't have to play anymore or I have to figure out where my character is. And it wasn't until the other day when I bought this and I saw this white cauldron, I'm like, what is this white cauldron? Why is it different than the rest? Then I read the instructions and I realized that you yourself have to get your own color across the finish line in order to win the game. And that's basically the premises of Switches. It's a very simple game and I finally found it. And uh, it is exactly how I remembered and I absolutely love it. Maybe this game isn't for everybody, but I played it in my childhood and I've always wanted it. And we didn't have it again. So we didn't have the game. My neighbors had the game and obviously can't get the game. And no one I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna keep seeing this game in thrift stores now. Now that I've found it, it's gonna pop up everywhere. And I'll be like, of course, that's what happens. I have not gone into the mall since 2019 I was blown away at how well it was prior to this one we went to the Woodstock one twice and like wow that one's amazing there's so many floors three floors or something like that it's this huge place and it's great and so like I was kind of like comparing it to the Hamilton one when I had went back when I had went there years ago, and I'm like, oh, like the Hamilton one's not that great. I'm gonna be honest, I like the Hamilton one more now. This one has four floors. There's a basement, a main level, a second floor, and a third floor, and every floor is completely filled with things. Whereas I find the one in Woodstock, by the time you get to the third floor, it's kind of looking a little desolate. There's not as much stuff going on. And by the time you get to the third floor and walking, this huge space, you're just kind of like tired and you want to go home and you're not really looking at everything. Whereas the Hamilton one, because it is a little bit smaller, I don't know, I felt like I had more energy to go to all the levels and like really look around. And I, I do want to go back sooner than later because there is a lot of really good shops in there. I think that pretty much sums up this antique mall haul. Hope you enjoyed it. I don't really do thrifting and antique malls and vlogs as much anymore just because I'm really focused on crocheting and miniatures. And it was actually supposed to be a miniature video that came out today, but I was not feeling it. And I just don't think I can do it justice. So I'm gonna give myself another week on working on it. That will do it for this video. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, crafting, and of course crocheting, why not hit the subscribe button? You can follow me on my Instagram, my TikTok, of course, my Patreon where I post mini vlogs and the patterns I make in the crochet projects that I do here. That is it, so y'all have a good day now.